If there's one Vivo phone we really enjoyed last year, it's the V29 series. With its great price point, camera, and Aura Light 2.0 system, it was no doubt a popular smartphone in its segment. Now, just a few months after the launch of the V29 series, Vivo Philippines has introduced the successor to the V29. Meet the all-new Vivo V30 series. And specifically in this video, we're taking a look at the top-spec V30 Pro 5G. Unlike the jump from the V27 to the V29, Vivo made a lot more changes to the design of the all-new V30 Pro 5G. Just look at it and compare it to the V29 5G we reviewed last year, there's a big difference, right? But aside from the massive redesign of the phone, Vivo also made several changes to improve performance and, more importantly, the camera on the V30 Pro. But given how capable the V29 series still is today, would it be worth it to upgrade already? Well, I'm Oster from Yugotype, and let's find out in this review. So, roll that OBB, and let's get started with this video. Alright, let's start with the design of the V30 Pro 5G. And it's no doubt a looker. Gone is the old design language with the slim camera housing. Now, the triple rear camera is enclosed in a black square housing. As for Auralite, it's this square down here, below the camera housing. Yes, this surround lights up, including the flash. Also, did you notice the Zeiss logo? We'll be talking more about the camera in detail later on. But aside from the new camera housing, Vivo also made the phone a lot slimmer than before. Compared to the 7.5mm thin V29 5G, the V30 Pro 5G now measures just 7.45mm. Like before, you do get a curved design to help you grip the phone better. It's also a bit more lighter too, weighing just 185 grams. As a result, it feels nice to hold and feels very premium. Of course, we also have to talk about the design of the back panel itself. Our unit is finished in what Vivo calls petals white, which looks very stunning. While it is white, well, it does have a hint of blue, which gives it a nice relaxing color. The frosted and matte finish also helps prevent leaving any nasty fingerprints. Perfect since you wouldn't really want to hide this beautiful design with a phone case. Like before, you get the volume rocker and the power button on the right side. At the bottom, you'll find a dual SIM card slot, a USB-C port, and a single downward firing loudspeaker. The top and the left side are clean just like before. Okay, so from the back, let's flip it over. And you're greeted by a 6.78 inch 1.5K 3D curved AMOLED display. Like before, it still comes with a 120Hz refresh rate, making it great for users who want to watch videos and, more importantly, the gamers. But what did surprise us was the maximum brightness of the screen. According to Vivo, the peak local brightness can reach up to a maximum of 2,800 nits, while maximum overall brightness is rated at 1,200 nits. No, I did not say that wrong. And by maxing out the brightness of the display, it is bright. Even when we use it in the afternoon in direct sunlight, we didn't have any issues with seeing what was on the screen. This means you can easily check out all the photos you took on the phone anytime, anywhere. It's worth mentioning that the colors are great too, even when the color mode is just set to standard. But if you want more vivid colors, you can set it to bright. While there is a pro in color mode, the colors do seem less saturated and the temperatures become a little warmer. But aside from checking out the photos and content you took, the 6.78 inch display is also great for watching videos, whether it's the one you took or on YouTube and Netflix. The only downside is that the speaker isn't the best. You only have a single mono loudspeaker, which you can easily cover up with your fingers. While the loudspeaker is loud and clear, I do wish Vivo gave this phone stereo loudspeakers to give users a better listening experience. This is a higher-end mid-range phone after all, and you want stereo loudspeakers. Then again, you can always just pair your favorite Bluetooth headphones or earphones with it. Now, let's move on to the highlight of the Vivo V30 Pro 5G, the camera. That Zeiss logo isn't just there to flex, and this phone takes great photos and videos. The triple rear camera is highlighted by a 50 megapixel main shooter that uses Sony's IMX920 sensor. You also get a 50 megapixel telephoto lens that uses Sony's IMX816 sensor and a 50 megapixel ultra wide with a JN1 sensor. Yep, the V30 Pro comes with three 50 megapixel rear cameras for various applications. This ensures whatever subject you're taking photos of, you can be certain the image will come out great. And the images we were able to take shows just that. Whether you're using the ultra wide, zoom, or regular photo mode, you get stunning images that are sharp all around. Like before, Vivo's algorithm does a great job of adjusting the colors so that they're not too saturated or overly edited. 
You can even choose the color mode from vivid, textured, and of course, Zeiss. For reference, the photos you will be seeing here were taken in Zeiss mode since I found them the best for my liking. If you want rich and vivid images though, I recommend setting it to either vivid or textured. Now, whether which one to choose, that's up to you. Even when you zoom up to 20x, it's still pretty much usable. Although it's worth mentioning, the quality and sharpness does start dropping off when you go beyond 4x zoom, but that's a given. They also go down when you're shooting in low light environments, but again, something to be expected. However, at the standard 1x zoom, you can capture nice photos even at night. While there is night mode, I didn't find the need to use it even when taking photos at night. The camera automatically did all of the work for me and the photos came out still quite sharp and detailed. The photos don't come out overly edited and you still retain details even though when you try to pixel peep. Although, of course, it's not as sharp when you're shooting in the day or in well-lit environments. At the same time, you also have the new Aurolite 3.0 system work with. It's great when taking portrait photos of people in darkly lit areas and like before, you can adjust the setting to your liking. This time, it's a lot brighter too, making it easier to light up dark areas if you're shooting some scenery. Adjust the colors and you can get some really moody shots and whatever mood you want to go for, just play with it. As for the front camera, you also get a 50 megapixel shooter which takes great selfie images. Although, given how great the rear cameras are, I think most users would rather use their rear cam and take a Gen Z selfie with Aura Light turned on. But that's just what I think. In terms of video, the rear camera can record a maximum of 4K at 60fps. Now there is OIS and various stabilization modes to work with, standard and ultra. The standard stabilization works even at 4K at 30fps, however, ultra only works at 1080p. If you want some cinematic shots, you can do it with the standard stabilization, but you do need to have steady hands. Otherwise, you might need ultra capture silky smooth video if you don't have a gimbal or steady hands. Like the photos, you do get great quality both during the day and night, and zoom is workable as well. However, there is no color mode to choose from like in photo mode, but that doesn't mean you get to capture nice footage when you're shooting video. Powering the V30 Pro is the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chipset. Our unit comes with 12GB of RAM with up to 12GB of dynamic RAM expansion and 512GB of storage. Now for reference, this is the only variant available in the Philippines. Given the capability of the Dimensity 8200, we're not surprised that it can run day-to-day -day tasks without any issues whatsoever. Despite having multiple apps running in the background along with games and other stuff, you can quickly switch to another application and it will run well without slowing down. This is perfect if you're going about your day and then you want to take a quick photo of something going by or, you know, just take a photo of the environment. But it's gamers will enjoy this chipset the most. You can easily run graphic intensive titles like Genshin Impact on max graphics and it can run it well without slowing down or any frame rate drops. One thing I did notice though is that the phone quickly heats up when playing Genshin Impact on max graphics. After just around 20 minutes of playing Genshin, the phone heated up already. Although it didn't seem to affect the gameplay at all, it's still surprising given the short time I was playing on this phone. Then again, this isn't exactly a gaming phone, so to be able to run Genshin at max graphics is still a feat in itself. Playing Genshin is one thing, but you want to see the benchmark score, so we'll flash on the screen right now. The Vivo V30 Pro 5G runs on Android 14 skinned with FunTouch OS 14. It's a great OS to use since you get ultra game mode, various personalization options along with the usual host of Android functions. Like before though, there is a lot of bloatware that comes with the device. These include the hot apps, hot games folder, which you will likely end up deleting in the future to save space because, you know, you do not have a micro SD slot to expand storage further. In terms of battery, the Vivo upgraded the battery pack on the V30 Pro and now has a 5000 milliamp hour battery pack. Given how slim this phone is, I'm surprised they were able to package it all together. With the larger battery pack, the phone now lasts a lot longer, allowing you to take more photos, videos, play games for extended period of time, and use it before needing to recharge. From my experience with the phone, I was able to use it for an entire day playing games, listening to music, running benchmarks, taking photos and videos, and by the time I got home, I still had around 20 to 25% of battery life left. Not bad at all, all things considered. But 
To give you a better idea, we ran our battery loop test and PC Mark's work battery life test and got these results. Now, if you do need to recharge, the phone does come with 80 watt fast charging, so less downtime, more time on the go. And that wraps up our review of the Vivo V30 Pro 5G. But wait, before that, we have to talk about the price. The Vivo V30 Pro 5G in 12GB plus 512GB configuration retails for 34,990 pesos, making it a lot more expensive compared to the Vivo V29 5G in the same configuration. For reference, the V29 5G retailed at 26,999 pesos. Yes, it's a big price jump, but the difference in quality can be seen both on the outside in terms of design and inside in terms of performance and camera. Now, if you were to ask me, if you have the V29 5G and don't want to cough up 35,000 pesos, then you can stick to it. It's still a great phone, even this 2024. But if you're looking to upgrade from an older phone and don't mind spending more, you can't go wrong with the V30 Pro 5G. The only downside is that it heats up rather quickly when you're playing graphic intensive titles and you'll have to contend with a mono loudspeaker. But what do you think? Is it the phone you'll consider picking up this Q1 2024? Or will you wait for other phones in the same price range? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, do drop a like and subscribe to our channel to watch more. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And of course, visit yugatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Jose, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.